before we start this lesson, I've noticed that I'm getting a lot of crashing in this scene at the moment. Just going back to my original setup, I realized I've done something slightly different this time, which I didn't do before. And um, because of this, if I was to come down at the moment to our color underneath our attribute from pieces and start adjusting this, um, I would get a crash. Uh, even if I put down a point wrangle, I seem to be getting a crash. And this is also leading to a bit of sort of sluggishness in the scene. So I'm not sure if this is a bug, but I've noticed that with our plant B here, I've currently got this set to be exporting polygons and pack geos. So if I middle mouse click on this, you can see we've got both polygons, pack geos coming in. All the rest of our plants are just polygons. Now, plant B itself, you might remember that I instanced the spines of our flower here. So these are going to be packed geometry, and then our stem itself is just normal polygons. So we've got a mix of these two. Now, normally this isn't a problem, but it seems to be in this case, if we are merging these two different types together, and then we are using it with copy to points with pack and instance on, and we're using variant, uh, it seems to be causing some problems for Houdini. Now it's not really a difficult thing to fix. We're just going to go back to our plant B here. I'm going to come down to our copy to points where we have our spines. I'm just going to disable pack and instance here. So now we just have normal polygon geometry. And we do have quite a few more polygons here, but because we are using instancing in our main setup, it's not really such a big deal. Uh, in fact, we're probably going to get a much better scene speed now. So I'm going to go back up to our scatter where we reduced this before. I'm going to set this back to a thousand, which was our original number. So yeah, even though we've got now about 184,000 points or polygons in our plant, in our main setup, we're going to be using this instancing and it's not going to be an issue really for us. So with that done, now we have polygons for this and we have polygons for everything else. And this no longer seems to be crashing the scene, which is good. So I'll have to maybe put a bug report to side effects about that and see if it's uh, something that I've done or if it's just a problem with the way Houdini processes these things. So now we have these growing on, no problem. In fact, I might just press D, open up our settings here, come to optimize. It's going to increase our scene limit now to 350. And I can actually scrub through. It's not super fast, but it's way faster than I have before. So that definitely seems to have cleaned this up. Uh, we could also come to our color now and we could adjust this seed as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter. This is just to sort of visualize our different plants. I do love that Houdini's color node seems to produce a myriad of amazing color palettes. I could sit here for hours just going through these. And in fact, a lot of times I use this node just to kind of generate color palette ideas for myself. Um, for now, I'm going to set this to 4.02, which was a setup I quite liked. Uh, feel free to set this to whichever you like, but this is only going to really be for visualizing it. We're going to look at setting our colors more specifically later. Okay, so let's move on now and let's just refine the sort of arrangement of our flowers a bit more. Um, I want to adjust the scale of some of these and maybe reduce a few of the number of certain variants. I'd like to take some of these sort of grasses and maybe this unfolding plant we had that we've just um, tweaked again and maybe make them a little bit bigger and make them a bit more of a feature. So we're going to create a control that's going to allow us to both scale our variants individually and also reduce the number of our variants within their group. So let's come down here. Let's make a bit more space. And just after our attribute from pieces, let's just point down put down, in fact, a point wrangle. Let's call this something like refine variant. But just make it a different color so I know it's doing a certain thing. Doesn't have to, but there we go. Let's just start by adding a P scale control. So I'm going to adjust our float attribute P scale. I'm going to make this multiply equal so we're going to multiply the current P scale by another slider. So channel float slider. And in quotes, I'm going to call this P scale 
underscore malt. Let's create this control. I'm gonna come up here to our edit parameter interface. I'm gonna set this to be a value of zero to three. So now just using this alone, we can scale up all our P scales of all our plants together. Now I can refine this group to adjust the variant I want to adjust by using the kind of auto groups feature we talked about before. So we don't have groups for our variant, but we could type at variant equals, let's say zero. And this will create kind of like a temporary group on the fly for every point that has a variant that's gonna to equal to zero. So now if we adjust this, you can see we're just adjusting our variant zero, which was our first plant, plant A. So as well as this, I'm also going to put in a bit of a control that's gonna allow us to reduce the number. And we're essentially gonna create a random number. And if that random number is less than say a threshold, we're going to just delete a point. So we can do this by saying if, it's called a random function, and we're gonna call PT number within that. That's gonna be our seed. So each point will have a different random number. So if that is less than, let's put down another channel float slider and call this thresh for threshold. So if that is true, let's do something. And that something is gonna be remove the current point. So we'll just put remove point. And this is gonna essentially, we want to call our geo handle, which is gonna be zero because this is our first input, so all our geometry. And we wanna call this with the point number, which is at PT num. Let's create that slider here. And now if we adjust this threshold, you can see we can slowly reduce the number of plants within our variant. So again, this is essentially creating a random number based on our point number. So each point will have a different random number between zero and one. And then if that is less than our threshold, so if your random number is less than 0 0.33, just remove the point. So it just deletes itself. Now we could also add a seed to this because the random number is based on just its point number. But if we say plus channel, we're gonna use integer here. So CHI, let's just create another slider called seed. Close the brackets and create that one. So we now also have the ability to not only delete some of these, but we can adjust our seed so we can sort of adjust that arrangement of that randomness. So it's just a little bit more control for us now. I think I'm actually not going to mess with our plant A here. It's going to disable that for a second. I think I'm gonna keep plant A as it is in terms of its sort of scale and arrangement. I'm actually going to enable this. I'm gonna instead look to do plant B, which was variant one. So plant A, B, C, and D was variants zero, one, two, three, and four. So variant one, and I'm actually gonna increase this. This is our plant B, that's the one that kind of unfurls. I'm actually gonna go to about 0.2.5 for our p-scale multiplier here. I wanna make this much bigger as part of our overall branch. I might just reduce a few of these because it is quite thick. Maybe somewhere about 0.23. And we can, of course, randomize this arrangement as well, just to kind of get a slightly better distribution if we like. I think that will work for us. Let's do this again. I'm gonna copy this variant, paste it below. And this time, let's change this to be variant two. So that was our plant C, which was our kind of grassy one. So again, I'm gonna keep this quite big. I think maybe I'm gonna go for the same, about 2.5. We can probably refine. We won't have quite as many cut off this time, maybe about 0 0.1, 0 0.15 for our threshold for removing these. And again, we can adjust our seed. 
think something like that is fine. So one thing at the moment that we need to be aware of is if we were to go back up to the start here and I was to start adjusting our threshold for our first one, you might notice that it's also adjusting our arrangement for our second one. So our plant B, if we reduce the number of these, which was our yellow one here, it's also messing with the distribution of our plant C, which was the sort of purpley colored one. The reason for this is because we are randomizing based on the point number, but here we're actually deleting points and the point number is going to change if we delete points. If I just literally come to our point display here and turn on our point numbers, you can see that as I reduce this threshold, it's re-randomizing all these numbers and you can't really help that. The whole point of having a point number is that it goes from zero all the way up to your number of points. So if you delete a few points randomly, all your numbers get resorted and they get new values. So because we're deleting some here, we're essentially causing our random number for the next operation to change, which is annoying, but it's actually quite easy to fix. All we're going to do is instead of using our PT number, uh, we're essentially going to store our point number as a different attribute. So let's come up to the top here where we created our first scatter. This is our original points, 4,000. Let's put down a point wrangle. We use point wrangles for a lot of things. This is quite an easy way to just quickly assign one thing to something else. Let's just call this set global ID. So here we're going to say, well, essentially we're going to create an integer attribute. So I at, I'm going to call it GID. Feel free to call it whatever you like, but this will be fine. And we're going to set that to be attribute PT num. So essentially we're just making this number be our point number. Now further down here, even if we delete points now, our point number will change, but our GID number, which we set up here, isn't going to change. If you don't believe me, we can come to this. We could control middle mouse click and just click on our GID to enable visualizers. It's going to come to this, edit it to be a marker. And now, even though I'm deleting them, you might see a lot of them are flicking because we're deleting certain ones, but the point numbers generally aren't changing. Well, not point numbers, our GID number is not changing. So now this is a fixed way of controlling our random number. Might be a little bit confusing, but essentially the point is we want to create another attribute that we can use for our random seed that isn't our point number. So with that said and done, let's take our original attribute wrangle here and let's just change our point number out for I attribute GID. Let's copy that, control C. And let's paste this down below to be the same. Now we should see that even if we change our distribution of our yellow plant here, it's not doing anything to our purpley color plant at all. So again, I'm going to set that back to about 2.3, I think it was. And let's just move on to our next one. So we've done plant variant one and variant two, which was plant B and C. Let's copy this once again. This time let's do variant three, which would be our next one. Variant three is plant D, which is this nice clamshell looking one. Go back to my render view. So for this one, I think I'm going to make this a little bit more subtle. I'm going to make this about 0.5. don't want it to be quite as big, sort of just kind of like a background element that sits in there. Maybe I'll reduce a few of them, but probably keep it about the same. And let's just do one more here. Copy and paste. This time we're going to use variant four, and that's going to be that last one here. I'm going to set this to be about two. I think I'm probably not going to reduce that many either. I'll just leave it as is. I think that will do for our 
arrangement. So there we go so far. Okay, so let's have a quick look at rendering this now. So our instances are going all the way to instances out. If we go back up to our main scene, you might remember we set up a, a separate render node here, our render instances, which is just object merging these in. Under our Redshift instancing tab, we've got this set to instance SOP level pack primitives, which means that Redshift is going to take our pack geometry and render it as instances itself. It's not going to try and unpack the geometry to millions and millions of polygons and crash our renderer. So that's all good. Let's come to our render here and we've got our material set to instances currently. So we can come to our material context. This is the shader we've currently got signed. Okay, so let's open our Redshift render view. In fact, I'm just going to create, let's add it here in our viewport for a moment. Click render. You can see what we've got so far. It's already starting to look nice. So let's bring in our color for now, just to colorize these a bit more. It's not going to be our final color. I'm going to show you later how we can assign some attributes from our geometry and colorize this within our material itself. But for now, let's just do a simple thing of just saying RS point attribute. This is going to drag our attribute from our geometry. We're going to grab our color diffuse, so CD. Let's just connect that to our diffuse color here. We need to refresh that just to get it to update. And here we go so far. Now, I think this is a little bit oversaturated at the moment. I might just put down a color correct just to tweak this a bit more. RS color correct. I'm going to bring the saturation scale down just a little bit to about 0 0.8, about 0 0.85, I think. Looks a little bit nicer to me. And I might also come to our material and just change our backlighting and translucency a little bit. So it's 0.6. Keep it about that level, but I might just change the color a bit. Try some different options here. Pretty fun, this backlighting. I think I'm going to go for sort of like this yellowy orange thing for now. Again, I'm probably going to change this dramatically later, but I think for the moment this is looking nice. So here we go. Okay, cool. So at the moment, all of our instances are growing on at exactly the same time. Uh, we want to create next an offset in our growth so things appear to nicely grow down our branch. Uh, we can do this by caching out our geometry as Redshift proxies, and we can then drive our proxy cache number using an attribute. So this is essentially what we're going to start looking at in our next lesson.